Welcome to the Geomagic how-to video on scanning into Geomagic with a Faro laser scanner. To get started, click Scan with Faro in the Getting Started window. This will open up the scanning plugin. Next, click on the laser scanner icon to go into the scanning dialog. Within the scanner dialog, we can open up the Faro laser scanner settings. Within the settings, we can control the exposure, the maximum threshold, and other settings which provide us better scan results. Within this dialog, our goal will be to make the laser stripe on the screen appear as consistent and clean as possible. To do that, we'll use the auto adjustment or the auto exposure setting. All we need to do is click on auto and point the scanner at the part and we'll watch the settings adjust on the fly. Another important tip to consider is adding a scanned clip plane. To do this, we'll scan the table or the surface that the part's sitting on. All you need to do is click the green button to start scanning and to pause between scan passes. When you're done scanning, click the red button on the ferro arm. This will complete and commit the scan plane to memory. The clip plane will be used to exclude any data below the plane that the part is sitting on. Make sure to enable it with the checkbox in the settings. Finally, uncheck Display Plane to hide the plane so you don't actually see it on the screen. Geomagic allows you to scan into two types of data. One is order data, which is sampled on the fly, and raw data, which is the original data coming directly from the laser scanner. Finally, when capturing data for a demo or benchmark, it's recommended to use ordered and raw data and also to put that in a new group. Now that we've got everything set, let's do some scanning. To start, click on the capture button. As you press the green button on the scanner, this will start a scan pass. Pressing the green button again will pause the scan pass. When you've completed scanning in that session, click the red button on the scanner. This will exit back to the scanning dialog. Some other important settings to take into consideration. We have spacing and max edge length. Spacing is the distance between points on the laser stripe. This is essentially your resolution. Next is max edge length. This is the distance between stripes that would be considered a continuous data. Setting this very high will allow you to move the scanner very quickly across the surface. Setting this value low will require you to go slowly across the part in order to capture continuous data. Let's continue scanning using our new settings and see how it looks. We've completed the scan, now let's check it out. In this view we have the raw data from the scanner. You can see the individual stripes and the individual points. Now let's check out the ordered data. You can see here that we can't see through it. The data is shaded as cells. This allows for better visualization. We can also see that it's uniformly distributed across the surface of the part. Looks very nice. This is very good data for reverse engineering or for inspection. The final step is to run the merge command. This will combine all of the individual scan passes into a single mesh. Here we have the completed polygon mesh. The blue is the outside of the scan and the yellow is the inside face. You can see there are a few missing areas which we did not scan, and we need to go back and scan those. 
This is the original part that we scanned. You can see it was unprepared, no powder necessary. We were able to scan it with the laser, no problem. Thanks for watching.